Shane, the, one of the talking points, I think we played the clip earlier actually, um, from the last couple of days was Steve Clark, who's the Kilmarnock boss, um, I suppose it was to rub salt into the wounds. Kilmarnock were, were beaten 5 0 by Rangers. Um, but this is quite an astonishing interview he gave after uh, the, the match, and we're going to play it now. But um, this is kind of one of these interviews I think that you really need to listen to it rather than actually um, see it in print. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. It's nice being back in the west of Scotland, eh? Really nice. When I was approached by Rangers about taking over the job here, I was assured. Now we don't have that in the west of Scotland anymore. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, they can call me a, <laughs> a <laughs> No problem, thanks guys. No problem. But they call me a <laughs> Come on. Where are, where are we living in? The Dark Ages. They're not allowed to call my sister a, a black bee, yeah? But they can call me <laughs> that, That's correct? Is that correct? What are we doing in Scotland? You know, I wake up almost... I wake up every morning. And I thank Chelsea for coming and taking me away from the west of Scotland, because my children don't understand this. They don't have anything to do with this. My children have nothing to do with it. They don't understand. So thankfully, when I go down there, my children, my grandchildren, they don't need to worry about this. So, fantastic to be back in Scotland. Thanks, thanks, Steve. Pretty astonishing stuff, really. You can just feel the emotion. Um, I don't know, Shane. I hadn't heard that until earlier. And, uh, you know, if, she, if Steve Clark is faking that, which I don't believe he is, he's doing a very good job. You look at, I mean, I suppose the other example that we would have seen of it recently was Neil Lennon. Now, in terms of getting your message across, I actually think that kind of interview Not where he's effective. clearly rattled, genuinely rattled, is far more effective than Neil, Ran Neil Lennon having a, a rant over the abuse. Like he's, Steve Clark is, is, is rattled there big time, you know, his voice even sounds a bit wobbly and, um, you know, you, you could be cynical and say that he's, he's trying to deflect after a poor result, but you can hear by his tone of voice that's, that's completely genuine, you know. And the Rangers boss Stephen Gerrard was asked about this uh, in his press conference afterwards and this is what he had to say in reaction. Um, I, I only seen the interview when I got home uh, last night. I wasn't aware of, of the interview or how Steve felt. He came into my room after the game and was pretty normal and we had a beer together. Talking about football in general, it, it never got mentioned, so I only seen it when I got home last night. Um, but, you know, the club have made a statement on it and it's a statement I support. You know, we don't support any kind of unacceptable behaviour from the terraces. Um, and that's the way it'll always be at Rangers. Um, that's all I've got to say on it, really, because, um, you know, I, I want to talk about the football. Um, if, if I can, before we move on, can I ask one more? This club has had Catholic managers in the past. Mm. How does it, uh, how do you feel when you hear songs like that song? Well, I've just answered that question for you, haven't I? I've just said that myself and everyone at this club doesn't support any kind of unacceptable behaviour from the terraces and we want to try and stamp it out of the game in general um, so we're always talking about the football um, that's all I've got to say yeah, I'm not really sure about uh, Gerard's reaction there um, obviously he's not condoning it but uh, he probably could carry stronger words about which is pretty despicable behaviour this, this is just a quote that Neil Lennon had um, at the start of the season you call it sectarianism here in Scotland, I call it racism. If a black man is abused, you're not just abusing the colour of his skin, you're abusing his culture, his heritage, his background. It's the exact same when I get called a fiend, a pauper, a beggar, a terrier. These people with a sense of entitlement or superiority complex, and all I do is stand up for myself. Patrick Thistle boss Gary Caldwell, as a former Celtic teammate of Lennon's, and he was among those who claimed that Lennon brings trouble on himself. People should know better, Lennon said. It's pretty poor, all of this. I was goading people, I bring it on myself. There's an effigy outside Tyne Castle saying hang Neil Lennon uh, this was before the game did I bring that on myself? Yeah I suppose the one thing I'd say I know you don't mean to paint the picture but 
this is definitely not a one-way street. Um, you know, it's it's coming from both sides. Um, in what, fr- in terms of sectarianism? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. I mean, we're drawing attention to it, I suppose, from coming particularly side. from one side, exactly. And unfortunately, you know, you do have to say that it is something that goes on on both ways. Like, how how do you solve it? How do you bring it into it? How do you fix it? It's, like, it's mission impossible. I don't really know. Like, you can make examples of, of individuals... It's, that removes the individual. It's not going to remove the culture. Isn't it amazing that this stuff still goes on? You know, it's. Uh, I think Northern Irish society has been normalised an awful lot, and uh, I don't really think. And I stand correct on this. I don't think you really get this at Northern Irish games particularly anymore. This sort of um, real, uh, you know, strong level of visceral hatred. Um, from my experience of going to games up the north. It's more likely to be a lot of abuse if Linfield were playing Glintorn, which would be obviously the so-called Protestant uh, club derby. And I, as far as I can see, sectarianism um, has almost been wiped out of the game there. You may text in and say I'm wrong on that, but um, Graeme Sunis actually is an interesting one of this because he was at our Virgin Media Roadshow on Monday and he spoke about his dislike of the derby. Um, I, I believe Graeme actually preferred not to live in Glasgow, I think he lived in Edinburgh, and uh, when he was Rangers boss he reflected on what it was like. There's an element that's not very attractive, but it is the biggest derby that I've been involved in. Really, yeah? Yeah, okay. it, and why is it? Because it means so much to the supporters, you know, on a Monday morning, I think there'll be far fewer, whoever loses that game, obviously the, um, a lot of them just can't bring themselves to go to work. Now would that be the same, you know, bleeding the Liverpool derby, would that be the same with that? Yeah, there'd be people who wouldn't find going to work, but not as many. The same with I don't, any other one I know. I don't think it affects people like that one does. There's so much rise on it. And the hatred coming from the stands? Not nice. I mean, I've sat in the stands and, and watched lawyers, doctors, accountants not watch the game of football there, just shout abuse to mm. the Celtic end there, and I'm sure it's the same when you've got a park I've, I've heard you talking about growing up in a, you know, a really secure, decent family, great values, mm. and you know, one of your best mates went to the Catholic school, yeah. You went to the Protestant school. You, this was not a thing in your world. Yeah, I lived, I lived in the sort of west side of Edinburgh and I'd walk to school in the morning with a guy called Peter Maranello who the thought was, he looked yeah. like the new George Best. He thought he was at Hibs, went down to, to Arsenal and I got caught up in the, sort of, the lifestyle down there. I never really achieved what he should have done. But we would walk to school together. I'd walk past my gate, go in to my school. He would walk around. And St. Joseph's was the other side of the school, the school playing fields. We shared the playing fields. And the only time there was a bit of... Because you have to understand, Edinburgh is so different from Glasgow. Okay. There's no religious problems in Edinburgh, not that I've ever witnessed growing up or since. We'd have snow fights. You know, we'd have snowball fights, and that's as far as it got. Right, okay. And then I'd wait for him to come back around and walk home together. And did you live in Glasgow as Rangers manager? No, I lived in Edinburgh. Right, because you, did, uh, you didn't want to be part well, of that. It's, it's, it's pretty full on, as you can imagine. Yeah. You know, being a manager of Rangers, it must be the same for Celtic. Uh, Chelsea have just taken a one in the lead, uh, making a three on an aggregate against Malmo. Um, I don't know, Shane, if you, if, you had, if you were at a club in the League of Ireland and you were Gerard in that press conference, what do you say? Uh, I mean, you, you can't exactly take the blame, but... No, I think he could have come out a little bit stronger, though. I do agree with you. I think he could have, like, really, really come down and, you know, hammered, hammered home, you know, probably used words like our fans were a disgrace and, you know, really kind of belittle the people who were involved in in this kind of stuff. Um, I don't see why he didn't really come a bit stronger. Like, the interesting bit from the Graham Soonest part there is, you know, if you look at other sports and let's take rugby, for example, you know, you'd kind of get... The opinion from rugby fans that this kind of stuff doesn't happen in in our sports because we've got a, a different customer coming through the turnstile. Which let's is say sometimes true. But it's sometimes true. But the point Graham was making there is that he has sat in stands and seen. I think he used the phrase accountants, lawyers, and solicitors turn into absolute animals and fire vile, vile abuse at players who are out on the pitch at, because of the colour of the jersey that they're wearing and because of their. Um, religious backgrounds, it's, it's, it's absolutely mental stuff. What makes somebody go from hard-working, nine-to-five family man with, who abides by all logic and sense and reason um, from Monday to Friday then and arrives into a stadium and, and, and sees a Celtic Rangers jersey on Saturday and turns into essentially a criminal? Essentially a criminal, yeah, and a, a, a tug that um, you, you wouldn't want to be having a pint with. We got an interesting text in 
As a Rangers fan in Ireland, I get unbelievable sectarian abuse and it's worse for me because I'm a Catholic. I don't get that abuse in Scotland from Scottish people. For obvious reasons, I can't give my name. You know, the strange thing about, I, I'm in my mid-30s now, but like re religion in Ireland and in, in Dublin, I, I, it's just practically dead, really, you know. I mean, I would mingle with people. I genuinely don't know what religion they are. They're probably not really any religion. And uh, it just seems so anachronistic that this still goes on in Scotland. And, you know, I remember when the anniversary of the Ireland, the Republic of Ireland-Northern Ireland game in Windsor Park, that famous game, the anniversary was yeah. 25th year anniversary was quite recently, and the hatred in the ground that night was so understandable because of the, the time, and it was just after those bombings and all that. Um, but this sort of stuff in this day and age, and I don't know, it's... Yeah, you'd wonder, that, that chap who, who texted in, obviously we don't know his backstory, but like you'd wonder there, I, I would imagine the abuse that he's taken, like you would, you, I, I would admit, that if I was walking down the street here in Dublin and you saw a Rangers jersey, you would double take because it would be extremely surprising thing to see um, anywhere in Ireland. Really, so I, it would. But I would, but I wouldn't turn around and fire abuse at him. You know. Oh, I remember actually when I used to go to the gym, a lad coming in in a Northern Ireland jersey in, in uh, the hardcore Dublin Ace uh, area that I live in, and I used to think, yes. Maybe slightly brave. Um, another text coming in as well, which I will read out. The the, the guy who did text in, um, who is a Catholic supporter uh, of Rangers, I don't particularly care about that. I would advise you though to go to your local League of Ireland ground and um, where you'll have a good time. Um, as Any a opportunity, Johnny? Yeah. Play. As a Celtic fan traveling from the north, going to Scotland as a kid, this is another text coming in. We were told not to wear our jerseys while traveling. I'm going to get away from this, and um, before we go to the ads couple of suggestions have come in on the show names. Um, I, I don't know, should we reveal that, Shane, what you're just showing me there? <laughs> do you want to do, do give it away? I never yeah. knew you were a Celtic fan. Is this going back, this going back to when you were a kid? I see. Yeah, can can you show it, it to the screen there? Of course, of course it is. Which, which one? That, that one there. At? This one over here? Yeah. yeah. That is... Uh, Everyone at home now is so reluctant they're listening on the radio and not tuning into our Yeah, I suppose we better tell you. Yeah, I've got I've got the Celtic Crest tattooed on my arm, Johnny. I would be a blatant liar to say that I am now a hardcore Celtic supporter. Far from it. I, I'd see very, very few of their games. But when you're young and stupid and living in Australia and Martin O'Neill has Celtic in a UEFA Cup final against FC Porto and you feel more Irish and Celtic are Irish and you wake up the following morning with a hangover and you're after having a few too many drinks the night before, you go for a walk and you come back to your apartment two hours later with something on your arm that was never really planned or never really intended to happen, but it's there. 